it's recording now. See? We're good. Thank you guys for coming to this presentation about Google. As you can see for our title, Embracing Google, that's what we're going to try to do next year a little bit better than we did this year. Um, a lot of people are still afraid to use the Chromebooks and they're still afraid to go to use Google Docs instead of Microsoft Word. So what we're going to try to do is make people more comfortable with it. Um, next year we are losing a computer lab, so we're going to have to rely on the Chromebooks more. We also have one more cart, so we're going to have to rely on the Chromebooks more. Yep. Hearts are hard sometimes to have to change, but we do have the access to it and we need to do it. So, what standard does this relate to? Because we all know we always do standards, standards, standards. Um, AASL 21st Century Learner Standard Number 3. We need to use skills, resources, and tools to share knowledge and participate ethically and productively as members of our democratic society. Google Docs offers a lot of possibilities in doing such because you can share, you can have students in there at the same time, they can be typing with each other. Google Docs can be great for that. So, before we actually get into Google Docs, let's talk just a little bit about the Chromebooks because that seems to be a major problem. There's something about them that just scares us. For one thing, it's online only storage and despite the fact that we know this, we constantly want to go, how do you save? it automatically saves. We have a hard time with that and kids will call and they freak out and everybody's freaking out over saving. It's online only and automatically saves. It also offers um, no YouTube or screencast ability and that part can be worked around with add-ons but it's something that we have to get used to. We're so used to just pulling up our laptops or our computers and going with it and we have to actually make sure that we are you know, taking appropriate steps beforehand. It may apply a little bit more for thought. And the hardest one is no access to shared folders on our school drive. We store so much on there that we have, you know, kind of take it for granted. And the bad part is that students can't really access that outside of school, so a lot of times we have to make it available to them outside of school anyway. So if we kind of move over to where we're using Google Docs, it can be a little bit easier sometimes. And then no Microsoft. I can't tell you how many times I get a call, where's Word? There is no Word. <laughs> I'm sorry you checked out the Chromebooks thinking that there'd be Microsoft Word. There's not. So we sometimes just have to get away from thinking about that as far as the Chromebook being just a smaller version of the laptop. So, what can we use to accomplish all this stuff? We can use our Google Drive. Google Drive can do more things than we actually can sometimes give it credit for. So, first, how do we access? Because this seems to be a problem. We can get to it when we're on our Chromebooks, but we cannot get to it when we're on a computer. And sometimes we have to be able to tell our children how to do that as well. So, the, if you're on, your, on Gmail, you can always just go up to the little apps tab that's going to be in the corner and you click on that little thing that says drive and you will get to your drive that will have all of your documents in it or if you're on the google home screen same little thing same little apps always looks like that it may just be in a different place sometimes you put it on the google screen we have a harder time finding it and finally on the chromebooks here's an image of a chromebook you'll see over there in the corner everything on that is on the left side that's where they put everything at I know sometimes when we log on, it doesn't want to connect to our drive, but usually we can still go over there and click and get to it. A lot of times they're going to have the Google Docs, the Google Spreadsheet, and everything like that underneath it. So they label separately, but if not, we can just click on the far corner and actually get to everything that we have. Sometimes it may mean that we have to click on Google Chrome and actually log back on because it does not want us to do whatever we're doing, but we have to work with it. Um, a lot of times I've found that the problem with the Google Chrome books with that is the fact that we need to do an update. And sometimes it just takes a little while to get to that. So, this is a short little video that explains the beginnings of Google Drive and how it initially started and where all of this came from. The screen plan of your home computer. A presentation at work. Those vacation photos and videos on your phone. The trip itinerary on your tablet. Resumes, recipes, videos. With Google Drive, you can now access your files from wherever you are, even the big ones. Whichever program you're using, just drag and drop, and there are all your files ready to be opened by you and shared with anyone you want. Forget files being too big to email. Just share them with Drive, and everyone has the same file automatically that they can edit together from anywhere. Now all your stuff, work or play, is in one place, easy to find. Easy to 
So on our actual Google Drive, we can import all sorts of documents. Um, a lot of people compare it to Dropbox. Some people say, well, I have a Dropbox, so why do I need to use the Google Drive? And there are a lot of similarities between the two of them. So if you do have documents that you just need to access anywhere, you can use Dropbox or you can use Google Drive. Um, the similarities between the two is they both have built-in viewers. So if you upload it, you can view it anywhere. You can go to any computer and log on, just the same as Dropbox. Um, they both offer the ability to share. They both are considered secure, and they both offer free storage up to a certain amount, and they both support many different types of files. However, Google Drive actually um, can support 30 different types of file types, which is more than Dropbox. So it can support a lot more. So depending upon your diversity of your documents, such as that are in our staff share folder, we can easily just go and upload that whole folder, and we have it all there where we, cannot, where we don't lose it. Um, Google Drive does like a built-in music player, which is something that we have a Dropbox, but you can actually do an add-on for that. Google Docs and Google Drive have a lot of add-ons that they're adding, probably out of request from a lot of people, because there's a lot of things that we want that it doesn't do, and they're trying to accommodate that. Sometimes we just have to search for it. Um, with Google Drive, you can't edit online. That's something that you can't do with Dropbox. Um, and it also has advanced searching capabilities. So if you go, I cannot remember what this is called. I remember I had a document about it three years ago and it contained this work, it's going to not only search all the titles, it's going to search inside that document to try to find it, which is really great whenever you just know the theme of something. You're like, I discussed this five years ago. I don't know what it is. Um, Dropbox does have more seamless sharing. It is easier to share, but you can also share in Google Drive, and we're used to sharing with our docs, and so it's the same way. And most importantly, it's all connected to our school Gmail account, which means everything is in one place. One-stop shopping, which makes it easier for us. Less passwords, less fuss, less must. We always sign into our email, usually at the beginning of the day. We all go there to view things. It's there. So, how do we upload? Well, we have all seen this thing whenever we click on our lovely little Google Drive. Instead of creating, you're just going to click on the little arrow, and you can either upload just a file. So if you do have a Microsoft document that you want your class to use, you can upload the file so they can access it on their Chromebooks. Or you can upload your whole folder so you don't lose it. But it, sometimes it just takes an extra step, but this is a good way to actually back up everything that we have also. Next, Google Docs in the school. So once we actually have gotten used to the fact that maybe we can do this and we can go use our Chromebooks or anything, there are a lot of different ways that we can actually use Google Docs. This video that's actually the commercial, it actually shows one of the great features about Google Drive and Google Docs that I love is the fact that multiple people can edit at the same time. So it's the perfect thing to use in class whenever maybe you want to have silent discussion. So I thought we'd watch this just to see the capabilities because a lot of times we use it just for basic functions when we can do it for something like this. Collaboration has gone Google. That, how many times have we heard the word collaboration? Over and over again, over and over. So, how can we collaborate? We can use Google Docs to collaborate. Just like that, we can do that in class. So, what can we use? Well, we have all these available. Document, presentation, spreadsheet, form, and drawing. Document is just like your Microsoft Word. Presentation is just like your PowerPoint. Spreadsheet, just like your Excel. Form, I love, absolutely love Google Forms. I think it's absolutely fabulous. You can use it for tests, you can use it for surveys, you can use it for a lot of stuff, and then drawing is like paint. And of course, we teachers can actually can connect to more apps. Um, sometimes we may have to have them unlocked, but you actually can get more. So, what makes it great? Automatic saves with shareability. Everything you do, automatically saved, so your students don't have to go, oh my gosh, the power went out, I lost everything that I have. Or the network disconnected in the middle of a project because that's something you know that never happens here and they can automatically share it. If you have them share it with you at the beginning, you can make sure they're working every day and they can make sure they have it with their teammates that they're working with, which is great because they go home and they're, they didn't email it to me. I couldn't do anything. Oh, they didn't email it to me and they do that. If a student moves, we can access their share drive and see maybe if they do have it in there. Whereas 
if it was on a flash drive, we wouldn't be able to access it and we'd be like, well, sorry, you don't have your work. So, saving. This is one of the great things that I love. It not only automatically t um, saves it for you, it tells you the time of the last change. So if you see this through, it says last edit was made yesterday at 831. I know if somebody has gone in there and done anything else to my document. I love that. And it, so that, and it also lets you review all the changes made from even days before. These are two of my favorite features. With the revision history, you can see every last change that has been made to a document. This is actually a group project that I've been working on in graduate school. We use Google Docs for all of our communication. This is where we post all of our ideas. We actually have online chats to do our discussion about the project. If there's anything different, we can go through and type it in. We can connect to, like, say, our voice thread on there, so that way we all are in one place at the same time. However, let's say somebody accidentally has a cat or their cat hops up on their keyboard and deletes everything. Well, sometimes with Microsoft Word, that could be a problem, especially if somehow I managed to save. With revision history, we can go back and see all the changes. So, if you go up to File and see Revision History, you click over there and you get a full list with the date and time. I've had students come into the media center going, I have these slides. They were there. I don't know what happened to them. Well, when was the last time you saw them? Did you see them at the beginning of class? No, they weren't there then. Did you see them yesterday at the end of class? Yeah, sometime around that. I can go back and look through the date and the time and go, okay, this is around the time. Was this? Click on it, and they go, yes. They have all the slides on there. Usually it seems like this always happens with presentations. I don't know why. But presentations, it seems like they always manage to delete four or five of their slides. And I can always go back and just click, you know, reverse to this, and you have to select that revision history, and they have their project back. So that way if they lose it, they do something silly. It usually seems to happen with sixth graders a lot. I don't know why, but they can go back and get it back, which for us is nice because we don't have to take their word for it that they had it at one time, and you don't have the freak out moment. And what I love is that you can see who changed it. So maybe they shared it with somebody that they shouldn't have shared it with, and they went back to delete it. So it's a little bit less hard to claim sabotage, as some of the lovely children like to claim, or sometimes we like to claim it as well. So. The sharing ability, the second feature I love. I love the saving and being able to go back and see the previous saves. Sharing makes us straight. It makes real-time collaboration with others a possibility. Just like with the Hollow Notes commercial, at the same time you guys can be on a document going back and forth going, I don't know what word we're using. Kids can just sit there with their Chromebooks and go back and forth and actually create a whole document. They can work on the same presentation on different slides and get more done. So it takes collaboration to a whole new level. Instead of just importing some slides that they may have done and they have to sit there together the whole time, somebody can go home and do their half, another child can go back and do their half, and they can collaborate. It also makes collaboration with me easier with classroom teachers because I can say, here's what I've got, you can make your changes. What happened? I don't, our technology. Technology! <laughs> Baby cried in the hallway. And then all disappeared. <laughs> Wait, do restore. Okay, great. And easily enough with Google Drive, you can just go back <laughs> and access it. Let's make sure it's still. Hi, Amanda. Hi. Right. We were on 20. We were on sharing. Yeah. And present. Okay, so. <laughs> Oops. Okay, we're back now that we have switched laptops and I made a few other changes. So we were talking about sharing and I believe we had said help that it takes collaboration to a new level and also gets back to where we can monitor students' work as they complete assignments. This is great. Instead of having to worry about them you know, giving you a draft on paper, you can set a deadline and you can actually go through while they're working on it is exactly what they're typing. And you can make comments on it. You can highlight and discover there and make a comment. And they can go through and read it, and they can click resolve, and they can go through and work on it. So, how do we share? They make it so easy. All you have to do is whenever, oh, and it's actually in this corner, which is why I pasted this up here, you just click on share, and the following box will appear. I share this with my other Gmail account, so it's not a Johnson County address. So, actually, you can also switch in Johnson County. You can actually also change owners and make it another person the owner of a document. 
So instead, the person can edit, can comment, and can view. Let's say you want to send something to your students and you do not want them to make changes, you can just do can view. Let's say you are sharing it with them and you want, you know, there's a group of teachers, you can do can edit. Or maybe you just want to make it so that your students can comment on a document so that you can make the appropriate changes. You can also do and give people um, specific access to things such as sharing the settings. If you are posting this on your website, we're all getting brand new websites so we might as well update them. You can do where it's public on the web, anybody can find it, anyone with the link. This is something that I do a lot on my um, on the Media Center page. I make it so anyone has a link can access it with no sign-in required. It just makes it easier for the students, but however, if it is a student-specific survey, I only do people at Johnston County, they're going to have to be able to log on. Or you can still just do specific people, which is where it goes down there. But if you are posting to share it on your website or in class, these are some things that you can do. So, while I was talking about sharing through the comments, this is what it looks like when you share through the comments. Like I said, this is for one of my grad classes where we were just doing this. On the same group meeting, I have the comment that um, another girl made, and I went through and I made, if you mark as resolved, and it checks off. So that way, if you are making comments on your student's paper, you can go through and see if they've resolved it. You can see if they've even paid attention to it, which is a nice feature whenever you are doing drafts. You can go through and check on all of that. So if you, um, <clears throat> the advantages, um, it's a simplified version of Microsoft. That seems to be a problem for a lot of us, but it actually is a good thing when we're talking about our students. Sometimes they get overwhelmed when they are in Microsoft PowerPoint and they're creating slides and they're creating this and they're adding the features. It's a simplified version. It's just the basics. Um, you can access on your mobile device anytime, anywhere they can access this. What I love is that I can be sitting there on my smartphone in a doctor's office and you can go through things. And students always have access to the most up-to-date version. Meaning, whenever you're emailing back and forth, and they have got that brand new version of Microsoft on their home computer. And at school, we may be one or two, sometimes three. I think we're only about maybe a couple versions behind right now, thanks to our update. We don't have to worry about the features. That's something we do not have to worry about, if, whether it's going to translate back and forth. And we can go green. Chromebooks can't print, at least not in our school. So everything is paperless, which is great. So that way you don't have to worry about a huge stack of paper. Our paper bill can go down, and maybe the money that we spend on paper can actually be used on technology. Wouldn't that be fabulous? So these are some examples in our school. Pretty much these are examples for me that I've used this year, because I have really been trying to develop my Google Doc accountability even more. So first of all, for documents. This is the Big Six Student Guide that I create. Um, that way students can have access to all of the steps in the Big Six in an easy format. They don't have to worry about remembering it or coming to the library to ask for it. So this is the document, and just like with the sharing, I made it available on my Media Center webpage. And it is, can view only, and anybody with that link can get to it. I made it that way so that way if they're at home and they can't log on, they can still get to this. They don't have to log into anything else. They don't have to be in their Gmail. They can just click on it. So I made it available on the catalog, and they can get to it. This is um, some seventh grade technology concerns. At the beginning of the year, the seventh grade was having a lot of issues down there. They sent it, they made a Google Doc and shared it with everybody who actually has some sort of say in technology so that way everything can get to working. This is really easy if you do have concerns because you can make sure that people are seeing it. You can say, okay, this person has checked up on this <coughs> and it's great for the whole hallway to actually collaborate together and go, oh yeah, I also have this problem. Oh, this problem is taken care of. You can go back and share it and delete it. And this is an example of a student project where they did their po poetry portfolio and it's all on the shared document they can share with their teacher. So a lot of times I know we've previously had them printed out. Poems are usually pretty short. They're easy to read on the screen. Maybe the long papers are not the poems that they're creating. It's much easier just to go through and see and you can see when they've worked on it and how long they've worked on it. Spreadsheets. This is not as fancy as our Microsoft Excel. But it is something that we can use. This is on the class sets list. What's great about this is I can share this with all the teachers and they can make sure that they have the most up-to-date set. So this, you know, it tells you everything about the books and you can tell the location of it, what books we have, how many books, and I can keep sharing it. And as we get new teachers and maybe they don't know where it is in the staff share folder, they can go and access all of this. And examples of use for presentation. Well, <coughs> this presentation was done in Google Docs and the handout that you were given was all done in Google Docs. 
However, this is one that was actually created by a student um, in the creative writing group that I was collaborating with. I really have tried to do creative writing. We did a lot of stuff in Google Docs to get kids used to it. So see, you can import backgrounds and everything for it. research survey that I actually had out. Uh, this is what it looks like when you're creating the form and as you can see you can require the login, you can actually you know, collect their username and you can show progress at the bottom of the form so those are some of your options. This is what it looks like for you. So after you go through and you're creating this is what it looks like. This is what it's going to look like for your students so you actually have something that they can read and they can go through and click on. What I love about this is when you're collecting data like let's say you're going how many of you have internet access at home and they go through and click on it or what technology do you have access to. You can go through it, and it's going to put it into a spreadsheet whenever you go and look at the responses. And what I love is where do you gather most of your information for an assignment? Look at how many say Google produce websites. My favorite is the TARDIS database. That's where they go to get their web information. We have all of this in which format do you prefer? You can see what they actually prefer to do. And you can also get it in graph form, which is great whenever you look at the total number of responses of children that just use Google products to actually get their answers to their research questions. You see the books and NC Wiseau only had five people that have used it this, at this point. This was at the beginning of the year. The numbers keep going down so we have to learn how to adjust ourselves to this. This is a good way to keep up. And I like this, how early do you start a project? A lot of people claim to not do it the night before. However, we know that we have seen where it's not been. It's interesting to hear their perspective on it. It's just a good thing to take a document and to see what's going on and find it exactly. So, Google Doc provides our students with skills, resources, and tools to share knowledge and participate ethically and productively. Google Docs allows us to complete that standard by doing all of this. You have your students communicating with each other. You can see, you can actually can go through and see, and you can save whether or not that they are, you know, actually being nice to each other when they're collaborating on a document. It provides a lot of, you know, possibilities. We just have to be willing to embrace it. And that's going to be the second part of our staff development where we actually talk about other ways to really embrace each specific app, you know, asset of it. Depending upon which apps you prefer, maybe you're not so into docs in your system, you'd rather do the presentations. We can talk to you about some of the add-ons and different features that you can use. So, thank you. The end. <laughs> <laughs>